guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, you're really welcome. My name's Laura and this video is a video that I thought I'd make because whenever I was applying to universities, I actually had no clue of what all the big and fancy words meant whenever I was researching universities or using my UCAS application form. So I thought this might be quite a helpful video for other students that were in the same position as me and didn't really have any idea of what it all meant. So these are the must know words when you are applying for university that you should be aware of so you don't get caught out by anything and that you can read everything and just feel confident that you understand what you're actually accepting or what you're actually looking at. Some of these words you may already know, but there may be some others in this video that actually surprise you with what they really mean. I found it really off-putting if I was researching something and really couldn't read half the page because of all the fancy terminology and languages universities like to chuck in just to confuse things. So this video will talk about everything in really basic and really important sort of fine detail so that you don't miss out on anything or overlook anything when applying to universities and medical schools. So first up, we have undergraduate entry, and this is aimed at students that are coming straight from school or without ever studying at university and having a third level education. Students that come straight from school are called undergraduates as you've never actually graduated from a degree. But whenever I was looking at courses, I found it very off-putting and confusing to see these sort of big fancy words for something that actually wasn't that confusing once I knew what it meant. So if you are a student that is leaving school this year and wants to apply to university, you should be looking at courses that are aimed at undergraduates. So the next word is postgraduate, and this, similar to undergraduate, is another form of entry into university. As the name sort of suggests, post means after you've graduated from something. So being a postgraduate means that you've already studied in university or got a third level of education or degree already. People that tend to go into postgraduate degrees are students that have already done a degree and then want to change their career path or they want to go into a further level and maybe study a master's or a doctorate. So it's worth noting both of these if you are looking at university websites as they do mean quite important things and they are very different. So next up is deferred entry and deferred entry basically means that you take the year out of any formal education. So deferred entry basically means that you will go through the whole application process this year and if you're lucky you'll be selected and given an offer for your course. With deferred entry though, you do not need to start that September when you're given your A-level results. Instead, you can actually take the full year out and then just join the university the year after without having to go through the whole selection process all over again. This is where deferred entry sort of couples up with a gap year. So a gap year is basically a year that you take out of any formal education. It means that you can do other things that you're interested in, like traveling, getting part-time jobs, or picking up new hobbies, or basically doing anything. For me this year, I decided to take a gap year due to COVID and the fact that I actually deferred my place for medicine so that I will be going in this September rather than last September. And it's meant that I've actually been able to do so many new things that I never would have done if I had gone straight into university. I even managed to set up this YouTube channel. So gap years and deferred entry are worth noting if you want to take a year out between your A-levels and starting university. So now onto some really important words to know about when looking at UCAS. UCAS stands for University and Colleges Admission Service and is an independent body that does all of the sort of things for universities for their selection process. So it's really important that you know how to use this online platform effectively and that you don't miss out on anything because it could really impact on your ability to get a place at a university or medical school this year. All of the sort of liaising between universities and you is done via a UCAS portal. So it's important that you go and register and sign up for UCAS so that you can get all of the information from your universities and also so that you can apply to your universities this year. Check the description down below to get a link to the UCAS website. So with UCAS, you'll probably have heard of things like conditional offers 
unconditional offers, and a variety of other words. So I'll just break these down into more simple terms so that it might give you a better understanding of what these actually mean. So first up is a conditional offer. A conditional offer, as the name sort of suggests, means that you are given an offer from a university to come and study with them if you meet certain conditions. These conditions can be things like meeting a certain grade at A-level, having a certain BTEC, or having another degree already. So another type of offer is an unconditional offer. And as you can probably already guess, this means that there are absolutely no conditions attached to it. That means once a university has given you the offer, you have basically been given a place at their university or medical school without actually having to do any work for it after you've got your offer. This means that it doesn't matter what grade you get at A-level or any other requirements as you have automatically got your place there if you choose to accept it. So another really important word to be aware of is a firm choice and an insurance choice. So this is really important when you are applying to the universities and if you get offers from universities. With a firm choice university, this means that it is your first choice uni that you would like to go to if you get an offer from them. A firm choice basically means that if you meet the grade requirements or that you get given an offer from the university, you will go here as your first choice university. If you are lucky enough to get more than one offer from a university, but unfortunately don't meet your first place offer or your firm choice, then you can automatically be accepted into your insurance choice if the grades you got or the requirements for your offer are met. This is a really great opportunity if you get an offer from more than one university because it means that you'll have the chance of going and studying the course or degree that you want as your second choice automatically. So if things don't go to plan and you don't get any offers from universities or you miss a grade and don't manage to get the requirements to get into your offered universities, then each year there are certain courses that release into clearing. Going into clearing basically means that certain universities have course spaces available and if you meet their requirements, you can automatically be accepted even without an offer or ever wanting to go to that university in the first place. It's a really great opportunity if you are stuck for other offers and options, but really like an idea of studying in a certain course or university that suddenly gets released into clearing. Clearing is basically how colleges and universities fill any remaining spaces. So do keep an eye out on for this because it is a really great opportunity for lots and lots of students to make use of. The final word to be really aware of is UCAS track and this is basically, as the name suggests, how you track the progress of your application and also of your offers and what is happening when results day comes. So it's really important that you keep all your details safe so that you can log on to this UCAS track and you can keep monitoring things to find out if universities have been in touch with you or if you need to fill in any other parts of the program or process to make sure that you don't miss anything at all when applying to universities. UCAS track is also where you'll log into on the day of results day to see if you got your place at university or not. So some other university related words now. The first one to be aware of when you're looking at websites for university is whether it is a campus university or not. Some people really like the idea of living on a campus and I actually wasn't sure of what a campus was before I did a little bit of research myself whenever I was applying to universities. A campus is a type of university that is set away from a city and is all in its own grounds. It's sort of like a school with all of its buildings and facilities all in one location. If it's not a campus university, it will usually be based in a city and will have buildings sprawled out throughout the city. Some university cities will be a lot more compact and will basically be like just a university in a city format. Whereas other universities, like some central London universities, will have buildings sprawled out along the city and you will have a lot more traveling to do to get between the university facilities and the other buildings. So it's worth being aware of this so that you know what sort of university you're applying to and to find out what would be most comfortable and appeal to you. So another word that I wasn't really sure what it meant until I was applying to university 
was the halls of residence and this is also known as halls and is basically where every student that wants to live away from home and in university accommodation will go and live for their year at university. University accommodation or halls varies very much depending on the type of university you're going to and what sort of price bracket you're wanting to be spending on it. So it's worth looking into the accommodation available as it can vary quite a bit. So some other words to be really aware of when looking at universities and these are more to do with how you're going to fund your course. So these words can include scholarships, bursaries, grants, loans, and these are all different methods of paying for university. So a scholarship, which you may already know the meaning of, is basically where you apply to a university and have something that the university really, really likes about your personality, your skills, hobbies, sport ability, and they really want to encourage you to come to their university and they are willing to actually pay for your course if you choose to study with them. You can gain scholarships for a variety of different reasons, and this can be based on academic or extracurricular reasons. So it's worth looking into if you're a really high level at something and would like the opportunity to have your course at university paid for. So a grant is another form of funding and this is usually available to students with certain personal circumstances or with financial difficulties and this is to help them supplement their fees at university. Certain universities also offer forms of funding like bursaries. Bursaries can either be for specific courses or can be for accommodation or for students with a bit of financial need. These are great things to be aware of as they can really, really help open the door to a lot more opportunities if you are struggling to find the finances to allow you to go to university and you'd like the opportunity to study at universities. So there are other types of funding available as well, and these are from the government. You actually can apply for student loans and these come in two different forms. There's the student maintenance loan and the student tuition fee loan. I've actually done a full video all about these and how to use them effectively and if they are worth getting or not. So make sure to check out that video for lots and lots of information about these. So the final sort of words to be aware of and to complete your sort of full uni guide of important words to know would be students union, which is where students go to sort of hang out and they organise a lot of different events for the university. And then the final word, which is quite a good thing to know, especially if you're going into first year, is about freshers. Freshers is basically the word given to first years that are entering university for the first time. This means that you can go to lots of events and you can really get to enjoy the sort of university experience for the first time. And it's worth looking out for things with deals, talking about freshers, as quite often you can get pretty good bargains and incentives for being a first year. So some of these words that I will talk about now are more directed towards medical students. And these were the sort of words that I didn't really understand whenever I was looking at medical school websites. So the first word that I came across quite a lot was that certain universities offered an intercalated degree and others didn't. So an intercalation is basically where you take a year out of medical school and you actually go and do another degree within that year. Some universities will offer this for their medical schools and others won't. And if you're interested in gaining like a master's degree in your course at University for Medicine, it's worth working out whether the medical schools you're going to apply to offer an intercalated degree or not. Taking an intercalated course means that you can take that one year out, usually between third and fourth year, but some medical schools will differ and you get the opportunity to go and study in depth another degree, maybe to do with medicine or more to do with research. It means that when you graduate as a doctor, you will also have another qualification alongside that. It may be a BSc, a master's, or it might be towards research. So another word that you will see potentially on different medical school websites is an elective. This is usually around a six month trip that medical students are able to take in their latter years at university and travel the world or other parts of their country and use their medical degree to help other people or to go and further their own medicine knowledge. 
So some types of learning to be aware of and it's really important because some people will learn better with different styles. So being aware of what different medical schools offer as learning styles is a really, really vital part of choosing a medical school to suit you best. So the first type of learning you may see medical websites talking about is PBL and this stands for problem based learning. So in simple terms, problem based learning is basically where you are given scenarios and problems to go away and work out yourself before being given a lecture on it. This is a much more independent style of learning and does suit a lot of students who wish to study medicine. This means that the university likes to break down things into smaller sort of individualized sections and allow you to go away and explore that in your own time and then come back to a main lecture and sort of find out a bit more about it. It means that you have to be a lot more independent with your learning than other medical school course styles. So the next style of teaching that you may see on medical school websites is CBL and this stands for case-based learning. Case-based learning in simple terms is similar to problem-based learning but instead of being given a topic and made to go away and learn it yourself you're actually sort of taught about the general style of the course that you're going to be doing next and then you are given a sort of problem or case to go away and look into more detail and then with your group come back to the lecture and find out the real cause or problems or reasons behind things. It's a mixture between being independent and the traditional style of the course. It means that you will have prior knowledge before going away and having to do your own sort of research and learning, but you won't be spoon fed everything. So another style of teaching is traditional, and this was originally what all medical schools sort of gravitated towards when teaching their students. However, over previous years, they've sort of molded into different styles of teaching as they found different ways suit different students. So traditional is done via lectures and it's your whole year sort of get taught everything in stages in the lecture halls. This is great for some students as they really like being able to get all of their knowledge from the tutors and know exactly what they're learning is actually accurate and what they need to pass their exams. However, for other students, some people find this boring and they prefer a more uh, independent style of learning. So if you're a bit unsure as to which style might suit you, there is another style of teaching called integrated teaching or learning. And this is offered by quite a number of medical schools throughout the UK. Integrated mixes the problem-based learning or PBL with the traditional style of course and sort of merges them to make a perfect sort of model for a lot of students to learn. Lots of students really like this as it's a good mix between the two. You get your sort of independent study and learning so that you can go and consolidate and solidify all of your knowledge, but you also get the sort of helping hand of your student tutors and from other students on your course. So another word to be aware of when you're looking at medical schools is the UCAT. So the UCAT, which you may or may not know about already, is the University Clinical Aptitude Test. And this is sat by lots and lots of students each year to get into medical schools in the UK. The UCAT is a two hour long exam, all done online, and it's split up into five different sections. There's the verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, decision making, and situational judgment section. These require lots of new learning techniques and styles, and you will need to study for this exam if you want to get a chance to get into certain medical schools in the UK. So check out the rest of my channel for lots more info about UCAT and how to prepare and revise for it so you can do your best. The other form of test that some universities look for is the BMAT. And the BMAT stands for Biomedical Admissions Test. This isn't required by as many universities and medical schools as the UCAS is, but it is really important if you want to go and study at Oxbridge universities or London universities, as the majority of these universities will look for the BMAT to be sat. So I hope you found that useful and it's given you a bit of a whirlwind tour of all the words that you really must know for applying to universities and medical schools.
Some of those words were definitely words I had never stumbled across before applying to university and I hope by sharing these with you you'll also be able to now understand what you're reading and researching a lot better. If you enjoyed this video please give it a like down below and if you haven't already go hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all my new content and videos that I'll be releasing to help you guys on your journey to studying in the UK at a university or at a medical school. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!